Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the Python programming language and machine learning. So in this video we're going to do something called sentiment analysis. Now sentiment analysis is the process of computationally identifying and categorizing opinions expressed in a piece of text, especially in order to determine whether the writer's attitude towards a particular topic or subject is positive, negative, or neutral. So we're going to get text from a website and then figure out the author's attitude towards that topic or subject. Okay, so right now I am on Google's website and it's called colab.research.google.com and I'm on it because it makes it easy to start writing your code in Python. So you don't have to install Python onto your computer. You can just go to this link and then log in using your Google account and then start writing your Python code. So let's go ahead and start writing our program now. I want to click on file here and then go down to new Python 3 notebook where a new tab is going to open up for us and a new cell. Okay, so the first thing that I like to do is write what the program does in comments. So here I'm going to type get the sentiment of text from a website. Okay, and I'm going to create a new cell here by clicking this code button. And you're going to want to install one of our dependencies. So we're going to install newspaper 3K. All right, and I'm going to run that by clicking this button here. All right, and so now it should be installing. And for me, my requirement is already satisfied because I already have this installed. But you may not have this installed already, so make sure you do this step here. All right, and I'm just going to comment this out for now. And I'm going to create a new cell. And actually, I'm going to get rid of all this text by clicking this X button there. OK, so now we can import the libraries that we're going to be using. So I'm going to import text blob, NLTK, and newspaper. So from text blob, I want to import text blob okay and then I want to import NLTK and from newspaper I want to import article all right so now let me go ahead and run this cell by clicking this button as well all right and it looks good it looks like we have no uh, misspellings and everything is running fine so let's go ahead and create another cell or a new cell and in this cell we are going to get the article so I'm going to create a variable called URL and I'm going to set it equal to the string URL that we're going to be using so I'm going to be going to the site called everythingcomputerscience.com so I'm going to put that in here https colon slash slash everythingcomputerscience.com all right, and now I'm going to create another variable. I'm going to call it article, and I'm going to set it equal to arti article. All right, and inside of this article uh, class or object, we're going to put in the URL. So now we're going to create a article object. So let's see, we're done creating our article object. All right, everything looks good for now. Let's go ahead and run this cell. And let's create a new cell. In this cell, we're going to do some NLP. And NLP stands for Natural Language Processing. So we need to download the links HTML content. So to do that, we just type article.download. All right. And we also need to parse the article. So to do that, I just type article.parse. And then we're going to need to download something called punct. Um, it should just be a one-time download. So to do that, we just type nltk.download and then we're going to download punct. Okay, and then we we need to do some keyword extraction. So in order to do that, we're going to use the NLP method. So we just type article.nlp and there we go. So all of this should take care of everything that we need to 
do, except for I misspelled parse here. So it's P-A-R-S-E. All right, so there we go. Everything looks good. Let's go ahead and run this cell. Hopefully there's no errors. Excellent. So you can see that it downloaded uh, punct here. You can see it says downloading package punct. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new cell. And in this cell, we are going to get the summary of the article. So let's type that, get the summary of the article. And to do that, we just type article.summary. And I want to save that to a variable. So I'm going to create a variable called text and set it equal to article.summary. And then I want to print the text. So to do that, we just type print and then text. OK, so let's run this cell here. OK, and so now we get a summary of that website. And it says computer science, CS, computer science, is the study of the principles and use of, let me keep scrolling over here, of computers. All right, and let me go ahead and scroll back. All right, simply put, it's the science that deals with the theory and methods of processing information in digital computers, the design of computer hardware and software, and the applications of computers. All right, and then it says, a computer is simply a tool for computer scientists like a telescope for an astronomer. And then last, it says, teach yourself, exclamation point. Okay, so this is the the summary of the website. So now let's get the the sentiment of this article or of this website. So let's create a new cell. And the first thing that we need to do is create a text blob object. OK, so to do that, I'll create a variable called OBJ which will be short for object. Now set it equal to text blob. And then inside of this, we will put in text. OK, and you can think of a text blob object as if they were Python strings that learned how to do natural language processing is pretty much what the text blob object is. All right, so these packages make it really easy for us. We don't have to write our own, you know, NLP machine learning um, methods and functions because we can use text blobs machine learning uh, functions. So these packages make everything amazing. OK, so now let's go ahead and get the sentiment of the text. So I'm going to create a variable called sentiment. And I'm going to set it equal to obj.sentiment.polarity. OK, and this will return a value between negative 1 and 1. And I guess I should put that in comments here. This returns a value between negative 1 and 1. OK, and of course, if the value returned is 0, then that means that the sentiment is neutral. If the value is greater than 0, then it's positive. And if the value is less than 0, then it's negative. OK. So let's print the sentiment of this website. So we just type print sentiment and let's run the cell. OK, and we get back 0.0. .0 so that means that it's neutral or the the author's opinion on the subject is neutral. All right, so let's go ahead and create one more cell because for people who don't know what that value zero means, maybe they Maybe they want a way that we can show what that means without actually putting a a number value there. So we'll put something like the text is neutral or the text is positive or the text is negative. So to do that, let's create a few if statements. So we'll say if sentiment is zero, then we're going to print the text is neutral. Else if, or elif, um, if the sentiment, 
sentiment is greater than zero, then it's positive. So we'll print the e text is positive. And we could just put an L statement here. So if it's not equal to zero and it's not if the sentiment is not greater than zero, then the sentiment must be less than zero. So that's what this L statement does for us. So if it's less than zero, then the text is negative. Okay, and let's run this now. And so now we can see that the text is neutral. So we are basically done here. What we end up doing was we grabbed a URL that we wanted to scrape some data off of. We did some natural language processing with that data. We got the summary from that site. We printed that text from the summary. Then we created a text blob object and we got the polarity of the text, which is the sentiment. We then printed that sentiment value, which gave us 0.0, .0 and we printed out in text what that value means which is the text is neutral. Okay, so that's basically it. Um, thank you all for watching. Please leave any questions you have in the comment section. I have more videos on machine learning, so be sure to check those out. And if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and share it. And as always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.